Hi, crafties. Welcome to Weekend Crafting Adventures. I'm Kim, and um, in this Cricut Crafting Project, I am taking on making a stencil with my Cricut Maker to create a personalized custom doormat. So let me tell you a little bit about the inspiration behind this project. Um, I had been working on one of my other crafting projects this winter where I was trying to figure out how to make a stencil with my Cricut Maker to use to create some gingerbread cookies. And in that process, I went through about three different materials that I was trying to use to make the stencils. I used an Oracle stencil vinyl. I tried Reynolds freezer paper, and then I finally wound up on cardstock for my cookie stencils for lots of different reasons. But ever since I've done that project, I have really been intrigued about figuring out how to use that Oracle 813 stencil vinyl to create a project. And so I decided that I wanted to try making one of those really cool doormats that are um, a brown color with black paint stenciled on with a design. And so that is the inspiration behind this project, figuring out how to use that stencil material and make a stencil to create a really fun custom doormat. So um, a couple of things about this project. So I want to tell you about the two resources on the web that I came across that were super helpful in this project, the planning of the project and actually making the doormat. The first one I came across is one called Angela Marie Maid, and she actually has a video tutorial as well as a blog post that I used as a resource for some of the materials that I was using. But the other cool thing that she has is a Cricut SVG file that is completely free. It is, um, it's one that says hello pumpkin. So it's more geared towards the fall, but that's okay. Um, it definitely still came in handy for me as a resource because I really wasn't sure how big I needed my design to be on the doormat. So that was really helpful. And I'll share a little bit more about that when I get to my experience. But the other resource that I used was Tanner Bell Makers Gonna Learn. Um, he has a huge YouTube channel um, all about Cricut projects and crafts and stuff like that. And and I found a um, tutorial specifically for making a DIY doormat. And so I also wanted to highlight that as a resource as well. I will have a full list of all of the materials that I used for this project on my blog post, but I did want to spend a couple of minutes talking about two of the materials that I chose to use for this project and why. And the first one that I want to talk about is the actual doormat that I chose to use. I um, picked a doormat called a Coir doormat. And I really didn't know much about this kind of doormat before I started looking into this project. And the reason I chose this doormat is that one, the size of the doormat that I chose to use is a 17 by 30. It's pretty big, um, but it could be used inside or outside. And the more and more I learned about this coir doormat, I really um, thought that this would be the right choice because it is actually made from the fibrous material that is in between that hard coconut um, shell and then the outer portion of the coconut. So it's totally eco-friendly 
and the color is like a beautiful natural brown and it is very absorbent. So what I'm reading is that it is great for absorbing water and things like that. And so being that I'm in Colorado and we get a ton of snow and things like that, I thought that along with it being an absorbent material, it also is heavy duty. And that's what I wanted to use to make my doormat. It could be indoor or outdoor, but just all of those um, details about this specific kind of fiber, the more I read about it, I thought that is going to be the perfect doormat for us to use in Colorado. Um, I did find it on Amazon. It was about $25. So it was a little more pricey, but I'm making this as a gift for my mom. So I thought that that was a good amount of money to be spending on it. And I will tell you, the quality is excellent. Um, it is heavy duty. It's got nice backing to it. It's a good thickness. So in terms of quality for the money I spent, I'm very happy with it. So I'll put a link to that Um in the blog post. And the other thing I wanted to spend just a couple of minutes talking about is the paint that I chose to use. Um, I had read a lot of different ways that you could add your paint with the stencil to the Coyer doormat. And the more and more I read um, with this fibrous material was that I wanted to use an exterior latex paint just so it really got into um, the fibers of this doormat. And actually, um, Angela Marie made I mentioned her before as a resource in her blog post. She definitely talks about how she tried a bunch of different kinds of paints, spray, spray paint, different things. And she found that this, um, exterior latex paint was actually the best when it came to creating a crisp line with your stencil on the doormat. So I went ahead with a Sherwin-Williams Tricorn Black exterior latex paint, and um, I'm really happy with the results. Um, I did go into a little Sherwin-Williams store, and the woman that helped me was super Super helpful. She wanted to know what it was for and how much traffic would be on the doormat. And that helped her help me decide exactly what kind of exterior paint to purchase. So I did get a quart of that. It did cost about $24. Um, but again, I'm super happy with the results. So all of the other materials that I'm going to be using with this project, I will make sure I outline in the blog post. So now I want to talk about the experience of making this DIY coir doormat and making the stencil with my Cricut Maker. Um, so like I said, I was super excited about getting back into stencil making and trying this Oracle 813 or a mask stencil vinyl that I had purchased and thinking that I would be able to use it with the gingerbread cookies, but then quickly realizing that that was not the right fit. So um, finding my design on Cricut Design Space, this was really um, an easy process. I knew I wanted a mountain, some sort of mountain saying or mountain scene on the doormat. Um, and I just found in Cricut Design Space this really cute saying, I belong in the mountains with some trees, some pine trees on the side, a cute little, you know, scripty line underneath with some mountains as part of this 
design image. And it's a little complicated, but not complicated to the point where I thought it would be too challenging to create this stencil. So I did um, upload that into my canvas on Cricut Design Space. And I did make a few minor adjustments based on the fact that I knew I was going to be stenciling with black paint and it was going to be on a pretty large surface. So I did use the contour function to kind of clean up some really small little cut lines that were actually going to be, um, there's an arrow that runs through the two words, I belong at the top of the image. And the bottom of the arrow had some really small little cut lines that were going to be um, on that image. And I decided that um, I would just contour those out. So basically I got rid of those cut lines. So instead of it now having kind of that feathered look at the bottom of the arrow, it has more of just a solid look, which I was going to be fine with on this doormat. So I did that. And then I used um, Angela Marie made, I used her dimensions of her SVG that she has on her blog post to help me know how big should I be making this design for the doormat. And so I went with about a 21 um, inch long by about 11 and a half tall. So right away that tells me and I'm letting you know, I had to get one of those large cricket mats that is a 12 by 24 because I wanted to do my design all on one stencil. I think you could probably get crafty and use your 12 by 12 mats and create a stencil and put it together, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted my entire image on the stencil to be on my material in one piece. So I did get out that 12 by 24 really long mat for this project. Um, so anyway got that design sized. And this all was a really quick process. I narrowed down my design. I knew what I wanted. So that piece was pretty quick. Now I'm going to get into the cutting the Oracle um, stencil vinyl. So I put it on my large 12 by 24 mat and loaded it into my Cricut. And I did have a stencil vinyl setting in Cricut Design Space. So I chose that and Cricut cut it beautifully. I weeded it out. That was a pretty easy process to weed out that stencil vinyl. And then I started peeling it off of the carrier paper to put it onto my Coyer doormat. And this is where I started to run into some struggles. So the vinyl paper that I used, the 813, is great. It's got a sticky adhesive side, and that was the side I was going to put down on the doormat and that I attempted to do that. It just became very tricky. It was rolled up, so I had to kind of unstick it from itself and try and get it placed on top of this mat, doormat, before I was going to apply the paint. And the problem that I kept having was that, one, the adhesive on the back of this um, Oracle stencil paper, I do not think it is made for a fibrous material like the rug I chose to use. So it wasn't sticking. So every time I got down one side, the other side would kind of roll up. And then when I would try and adjust for where the words were or the images within this stencil, it was not sticking. I spent 
a lot of time doing this. I really feel like I spent more time than I should have. I probably should have uh, given up with that material a little bit faster, but I was so determined that I really wanted to use that Oracle um, stencil vinyl for this that I just kind of kept going with it. But after about probably 30 minutes, I would say of really trying to adjust and use tape and stick this stencil down onto my doormat, I realized that it just was not going to work the way I wanted it to. I did not want to waste more of that stencil material. So I did decide to throw that one away. I do still have more on my roll and I am definitely going to find something that I can stencil with that Oracle stencil paper. It is just not going to be for this project. So back to the internet, I went and I did remember that I had another stencil material that I had read about that I tried again with the gingerbread cookies, but it didn't work well for that. And I started looking on YouTube and I came across Tanner Bell's Makers Gonna Learn Freezer Paper Stencil Doormat Project. And I thought, well, okay, let's do it. So I watched Tanner's YouTube tutorial and it looked really cool. So I decided to go with the freezer paper for my stencil. And I'm so happy I did. This process was pretty easy, easier actually than I expected. I did have some troubles with the cookies, having my freezer paper not rip, but I think because my design for this stencil was so much larger that it really worked well. I did not know that Cricut Design Space has a freezer paper cutting setting. It does. So I put my freezer paper onto my 12 by 24 mat, put it in the Cricut Maker, made sure my setting was correct, and Cricut cut it out beautifully. It did not rip. It really held together well. So this experience of using the freezer paper for this doormat stencil is great. Um, I weeded it out and I did follow some tips from Tanner on his YouTube tutorial. Um, I did weed out the main image of I belong in the mountains with that mountain scene and the trees. But what ends up happening with these stencils is you have a few of these inside parts, I'm going to call them. So basically like the inside of a letter that doesn't pull up when you're removing your stencil from the mat. So I left all of those inside pieces on the mat and did not take them off. I then went ahead and attached the freezer paper to the Coyer doormat. And here's the coolest thing about one of the coolest things about this project. So this freezer paper has two sides. It has like a plastic coating on one side that's shiny and of more of a dull paper looking side. And when you're cutting your freezer paper, you put the shiny side down. Um, and then when you're attaching your freezer paper stencil to the rug, you put the shiny side down and you use your Cricut Easy Mini Press to attach the stencil to the doormat. I, I did not think this was going to work, but after watching the YouTube tutorial from Tanner on Makers Gonna Learn and then doing it myself, it does work. It actually adheres your freezer paper stencil down onto your doormat. So this process did take me some time. I think in 
Tanner's tutorial, he says about 10 seconds per area. It took me a bit longer than that. I would say to put my image, stencil image, onto my doormat, that took me a good 20 to 25 minutes of really taking time to press down that stencil and have it adhere to the doormat so that nothing was kind of popping up or rolling up. And you really want to get a good attachment to that rug before you're going to be stenciling with the paint. So that took me some time. And the other thing that took me a little bit of time was making sure my stencil was placed in the center of the doormat. That can be a little tricky um, and it takes some measuring and using those rulers and things like that. I, I was lucky in that my image, it, it's not like a perfect rectangle. It's a little bit kind of on an angle. So I felt good about using the rulers and getting it as close as I could as centered. So this freezer paper is adhered down to my um, doormat. And then I'm going to go back to those inside parts that I had left on the Cricut uh, cutting mat for, let's say, the letter B or E or all of those letters, some of the mountain design and some of the tree design. So I carefully weeded those off of the sticky mat and then I went back to the bigger stencil image on the doormat and I added those pieces in, adhering them again with my Cricut Mini heat press. And that worked so well. Um, one of my most favorite parts about this project was actually the stenciling. Using that dark black paint with my stencil brushes and stenciling on that image to the doormat. Um, a couple of tips about that process. I did get a stencil pack, a uh, paintbrush pack of four, and they were really reasonable. I picked them up at Walmart. They were about $4 for four brushes. And I ended up using the two smallest brushes in that four pack for my design. The other thing that I did is um, when I was using the paint, I would get it on my paintbrush, but then I always, I used like a extra piece of cardstock that I had lying around and I got that extra paint off the brush. When I was stenciling, I made sure that it was really just up and down dabbing motions, up and down on top of that stencil, on top of that rug to create that image. And then after I painted, stenciled that entire image, the fun part is peeling up that stencil. There was no residue from the plastic coating from the freezer paper, and the image came out beautifully. Crisp lines with the paint that I chose to use with the tip from Angela Marie made. It, it came out great. I'm very happy with the results. I think my mom's going to love it. Um, so that was a great experience. So my crafting keepers for this project, um, I'm going to say my first crafting keeper is this Reynolds freezer paper with the plastic coating on one side to make stencils for the Coyer rug doormats. I am definitely going to be making one for our house. I'm not exactly sure what image I'm going to put on it yet, but I'm really looking forward to it. Just that whole experience of how it adheres down to the doormat, how nicely the paint goes on and those crisp lines. I am definitely keeping this in my crafting corner. 
And then the other crafting keeper for this episode is going to be my Cricut Easy Mini Press. The more I thought about this project and all the other projects that I do with my Cricut Maker, I will say this Cricut Mini Press gets used a ton. I use it for when I'm making hats to supplement the hat press. I use it for um, making my little drawstring bags, putting vinyl on small areas. I'm using it for adhering freezer paper to a doormat. I mean, the, the amount of projects that I have used this mini press for, this thing is invaluable. So if you are on the fence about whether or not you need or this little mini press, I recommend it. There are just so many projects that I've used it for that I didn't think I was going to use it for. This one obviously is in my crafting corner, and I just really felt like it was a good one to highlight in case you were thinking about whether or not it is something that gets used. I use it all the time. So my satisfaction rating for this Cricut crafting project is a four. And the reason I gave it a four was that I wasted a lot of time trying to get that Oracle stencil vinyl cut on and adhered to the doormat. I added probably a good, I would say 45 minutes to an hour to this project because I really was intent on using it, but it just didn't work for the coir fibers that are on this doormat. I will be finding something else to do with that stencil material for sure. But that wasting that time and that material brought down my satisfaction rating a little bit. But overall, I mean, without that 45 minutes or so to an hour that I wasted to begin with, this project really is maybe a two hour project. I think Tanner said it, it was a bit faster, um, a project that was a bit faster. I think my design that I chose, and then again, how long it took me to not only adhere the freezer paper to my doormat, but then also stencil the paint on took me a little longer, but it is doable in a couple hours and the results are amazing. Um, really enjoyed this project. If I get my other doormat done before this podcast um, episode goes live, I will definitely include some pictures into that. But I hope that this inspires you to try using this Reynolds freezer paper as a stencil material and create a really fun custom doormat. Until our next adventure, take care. That's all for this episode of Weekend Crafting Adventures. Now go get that Cricut machine off the shelf and get crafty. For more information on this crafting project, interesting tips, tricks, and techniques, visit wcapodcast.com. Until next time when we embark on another adventure.